Hi, I'm Rob and it's Guild Wars War 2 and today is Blue Day up against Vikingos today. Now this could be my last Guild Wars video for a two or three months, I'm not sure yet. Um, we're going to see what happens. The trouble is I don't think there's much value in showing these Guild Wars fights at the moment because I am in a new guild. We are we're working our way up the, up the brackets, there's no choice but to do that. But we do jump up about 10-15 brackets every single time. So, I don't know. I don't think there's much value in showing these fights. They're not that interesting, I don't think. But let me know what you think in the comments. I'm not sure. Might take a break from showing Guild Wars until we get to the higher brackets. So the fights are harder and more interesting. But on to, um, on to this one, anyway. Wiku is the first battle. Kerberos, Banshee, Deathnail and Kraken have to be wary of these chances of Devours. So we get rid of them as quickly as possible. We're just going to go with a nice, aggressive skull-based team here with high damage. Web Spinner dealing triple skull damage to poisoned and webbed enemies. Border creates four skulls boosted by blue allies. And we're going to have all blue allies. That is going to be a lot of skulls. And Skyler, if we can get a four match, creates a bone storm on four or five gem matches, which is skulls, which makes even more skulls for our baldy giant to take people out with and we have cobalt in wand important to have a blue weapon on this explodes a load of red gems which charges up the border grants a, ran a random status effect which i'm not too bothered about but it does have a summon just in case anything should go wrong champion talents impact counter attack stone circle dwarven armor some of these aren't a lot of use but it's important to have the 50 percent start for a border and a fortitude and the banner for this, I'm going to go for plus two red, plus one blue, minus one brown. Benefits our border, and if we get any sort of explosions on the lightning strike, it could charge him up. Even if we don't get the colours we want absolutely immediately. So let's dive in, we're looking for red straight away. If we can get red straight away, then border will be absolutely ready to rock and roll and do his baldy giant skull stuff. Alright, here we go, here come the skulls. One down, two down, three down, see you later. See, this is what I'm on about. This is why I might skip a couple of months of Guild Wars. This is not that interesting. It's no disrespect to the teams we're fighting. It's just we're in a new guild. Uh, we've got a lot of powerful players. We are jumping up through the guild, through the um, brackets really, really quickly. But these fights in these stages can't be that interesting, surely. Anyway, I'm up against next is Kai uh, Kipiax Room. Frozen Soul removes all red gems, deals 11 damage. Dragon Soul explodes gems. Crystal Axe damage to all and has a summon. And Lady Ironbeard deals damage. All right, again, time to just double check. No, no, no champion talents. See, I can't wait till the battles get harder. Got no interest in these lower level ones, to be honest. That's, again, nothing to do with the players I'm fighting. Just I really like games that are challenging. And I'm looking forward to getting back to those. Might as well get more web spinner up if I can, if I can get blue or green, but I can't, so I'll have to settle for something else. And there you go. Victory. Keep forgetting to look at the points. I'm in a 1,416. See if I can remember to put the points up this time. What I don't want to happen is get so used to these comfortable battles and then get lazy. Because Bracket 2, I absolutely loved it. It was like um, you had to think about every single fight. You had to counter certain teams. You had to really plan your... <clears throat> what you're going to do and things like that. And I don't have to do that at the moment. I don't want to get into a a lull where I get lazy and then get into bad habits of not doing those things anymore. Anyway, third battle up against Dark Lolito. Rune Forger. Splash damage. Explode a random gem for every brown ally and enemy. Nothing really too bad to watch out for in the champion talents. Lord Ironbeard. 
Lady Ironbeard and King Highforge. Right, same deal. Got a nice blue match there with a four match. That's going to give us a Bone Storm at the same time. Skull Gems fall more than the other colours. Let's get our Baldy mate up. And let the skulls begin with that triple skull damage. Can we get a double hit here anywhere? I don't think so. Got a lucky one though. Settle for that. And it was worth 1,518 points. Good old Boulder. And Web Spinner. Not taking away from Web Spinner. Web Spinner is a thing that makes this tick with that triple skull damage. Speedy 49. Summer's Fury deals damage to all enemies and creates six red gems. Nothing going on regarding entanglement at the start, which is what you have to watch out for with this team, with my team, because it's rendered poor at the beginning if you start off entangled. And then Ranger deals damage to an enemy. You still have that troop in the early days. Atlanta, damage to all enemies. And 15 damage to all enemies. So, okay. No red straight off the bat, but we do have a potential skull hit or could get purple and blue at the same time. So let's, uh, let's get rid of somebody straight away. There's the red. And here comes the dead. Oh, did I, I think I flicked the stick the wrong way then. I should have had an extra turn. I think I flicked it the wrong way. Hey-ho. 1,630 points. And Shmoo is the last opponent. Luther gives 12 attack to all allies. Then Barry is the first ally. Shmoo. Doom Scythe deals damage to all enemies. And converts yellow to Doom Skulls. And some more stuff. Convert all blue to Skulls. So this is... Not a bad team. It's just hindered by the lack of damage done by the team because basically like the higher your level goes up in, in the game the more kingdoms you increase your power and things like that it all helps push up the power of your team and what guild you're in and how much stuff you get done we'll do a video on that soon so many different things affect your power it is unbelievable right borders up loads of blue everywhere this is not going to last long and there it is Oh, he's impervious, so we're going to have to do another hit somewhere. It's a good way to stop Web Spinner, impervious. Should we give Web Spinner the glory at the end? Not if there's no blue or green, we won't. And there it is. Alright, so as I say, this probably might be the last... Guild Wars video I show for a couple of months until we're up in the higher echelons of the better, more challenging brackets. It's just that I just don't think there's a lot of value in showing these these fights. I'd, be, I'd appreciate what people think in the, in the comments. I don't know, but because on one hand I could show a wide variety of different teams every Guild Wars just for the sake of it, just to show different possibilities while the fights are straightforward. But at the same time. I don't want to experiment too much because that gets you less points, which means overall we're not going to jump up as high as we would ordinarily. If I get a high score, which everybody getting a high score in a guild helps you jump up brackets quicker. So I don't want to do that at the same time and then actually hinder the progress of the guild. So I don't know. Let me think. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm a bit torn on it at the moment. But right now I'm thinking I'm going to put hold on guild, guild Wars vids just for a minute until we get to the higher brackets. So we'll see what we got in total today web spinner the mvp no surprise there 9582 so not too shabby sherlock well there's a video if you enjoyed it bash that like and subscribe button if you've not done so already 
But most of all, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you again soon. Bye for now.